Shalom, friends. It's a pleasure to be here with Rabbi Denise L. Ager, who is an international Jewish leader and social justice activist. She's the founding rabbi of Congregation Kol Ami in West Hollywood, California, and was also the first woman elected as president of the Southern California Board of Rabbis, and also the first openly gay president of the Central Conference of American Rabbis. Rabbi Ager is the editor of the groundbreaking book, Mishkan Gava, Where Pride Dwells, a celebration of LGBTQ Jewish life and ritual, published by the great CCAR Press in 2020. Rabbi Ager, thank you so much for taking time. So great to be here with you, Rabbi. So um, why is this, um, uh, why and how is this a, a groundbreaking book um, for, for the Jewish world right now? Well, this Mishkan Ga'ava, Where Pride Dwells, is, is unique because there is no other denominational, let's say, published collection of prayers, rituals for the LGBTQ Jewish community and allies. Uh, and so it shares a title, Mishkan, with all of the other reform prayer books, Sidur, Machzor, uh, and is seen as the supplemental prayer book, supplemental Sidur, if you will, for both personal prayer and communal prayer uh, in the reform movement. But what's beautiful about this book, and I know you share a commitment to Klal Yisrael like I do, uh, it is not only a book for reform Jews or written by reform rabbis. This is a book that has contributions from people all across the Jewish spectrum, uh, from uh, traditional to not, from lay leaders to uh, individual poets to rabbis to cantors. So it's a very rich book to try and take the LGBTQ individual personal communal experience and give it Jewish voice. Amazing. It's so important, so important and sacred work. I wonder, just to give folks a taste of it who haven't had the chance to buy it and read it yet, if you might have a prayer you would read or a suggested, a suggested ritual you might share, something of the like? Sure, I, I, have, I want to share this one, which is um, for those who are Jewishly knowledgeable, know that in the Amidah section, the Tefillah section, it opens with a prayer about the Avot, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And in liberal tradition, we add the Imahot, Sarah, Rebecca, Rachel, and Leah. So a prayer to acknowledge our ancestors. Well, this is a blessing for my LGBTQ ancestors. Sorry, sorry day, before, just before you start, what page number is it on? It's on page 29 of Thank Mishkan Ga'ava, Where Pride Dwells. Thank you. It's a beautiful piece written by uh, Dave Yadid, uh, neither a rabbi nor a reform necessarily. Again, a, a way to show that this book is really up for everyone. You who fought to love, you who prayed to the same God I do, you who insisted on your dignity even when the world said you had none, you who died of AIDS while fighting for a cure so that people like me might live, you who were shot in a massacre while on a dance floor, you who could not come out and held your secret until your dying day, you who were insulted, shamed, beaten, and brutalized, yet kept walking, you who contributed your fierceness, your originality, your art, and your voice to this world, I walk in your memory. I walk this path smoothed and chartered by your sacrifice towards justice, towards holiness, towards freedom, Baruch atah Adonai, Magain Avraham, Ve'ezrat Sarah. Blessed are you, Adonai, Sarah's helper, and Abraham's shield. A beautiful tribute to uh, often the LGBTQ elders and ancestors who, who were not out and, and had no acknowledgement, but for whom uh, we are their heirs, their wow. courage, and their fortitude, and their faith. Wow, wow, very nice, thank you. One, one of the things, though, Rabbi, that's also, uh, I think, wonderful about this particular collection of prayers is also, um, there's so much in here for those who are transgender, who are uh, transitioning their genders. Uh, you know, it's a, such a difficult time, it's a difficult time for many people to figure out, to understand. And so um, I'm just gonna find the right page here. There's a, a be beautiful prayer uh, uh, written by um, Sam Hipschman to take something that's so powerful and make it into a blessing, into a ritual. And that is a prayer for beginning hormonal treatment, which is part of the process of transitioning, gen transitioning gender. We, we don't think about how do we make this a, a sacred act and acknowledge that we're all created in B'Tselem Elohim, and yet 
our souls, right? We, we pray Elohai Nishama on the one hand and I share Yetzar on the other, body and soul, we thank God for both. But acknowledging that the inner and the outer sometimes don't match and mesh. And so this is a beautiful prayer. What's the page? Elohai, Nish Elohai Nishmati. Sorry, what was the page number? Page 63, page 63. A prayer for, for beginning hormonal treatment. Thank you. Elohai Nishmati, God, the soul that you've given me is pure. When you blew the breath of life into me, it reached all the way to my deepest depths, to the place where my soul lives. That place knows no physical form. In that great expanse where my soul dances with yours, I know my deepest truths. My soul knows truths that do not always make sense to me or to others. It knows that when I take a chance on the unknown, my own physical form can mirror the expansiveness within me. Blessed is divine that instills within me the ability to know my deepest truth. Um, a beautiful way to, to take a, a critical and sacred moment and to give it holiness and to add, make it be in the framework of our tradition. So beautiful. So as you know, uh, there's a Talmudic debate about whether it is um, more, more spiritually beneficial to limit one's words of tefillot, to, to minimize one's words of prayers, and just stick to the basics, or to expand. Um, and I, 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 and I presume you are in the latter camp, that actually see it as religiously, spiritually advantageous to continue to offer new and enhanced and expansive prayers. And I wonder, what, what was the problem you were hearing that made this necessary? What, 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 did you, what was the problem you saw or heard that led to this need? I, for some of us, it might be obvious, but, but for you to flesh that out. And how do you think this can help to respond to that? Well, I, I think that's right. You know, we always have a tension in our tradition between the keva, the fixed and received tradition, and the kavana, the inspired text, and, and things that, you know, what a lot of us don't realize, I think, is that a lot of the things that are now fixed and in, into our traditional prayer rubrics and prayer services, once were inspirational, right? Once were somebody, individual rabbi's prayer that he said himself. So in that tradition of inspirational prayer of kavana, of it, this is where this particular collection of prayers and rituals lie uh, in that debate. And secondly, um, the LGBTQ experience um, is different. And uh, not, you know, the Jewish assumption is heteros heteronormativity, heterosexuality. Um, and that's, that's okay, but it doesn't always reflect the lived experiences of LGBTQ Jews and their, and their families. And so through prayer and through meditation and through reflection is an opportunity to draw closer in covenant, I believe, with, with our God and closer in covenant with Jewish tradition. And that's been my work for more than three decades is to work within, I've worked within the LGBTQ community to help draw people closer and re-engage with our tradition, a key roof, if you will, to, um, to, to take their Judaism seriously and not to just say, oh, well, I'm not welcome here, but to demand our place and uh, demand our experience be part of one of the many variety of Jewish experiences that there are. Yeah, beautifully, so well said. And in addition to inclusivity, that we can stand before the creator of the world, however we understand her, um, and bring our full self to that encounter, that relationship, and that we have the language to ensure that we can do that. So let me ask you just one more question, and I know it's a huge one. You could talk about literally for hours, but where have we um, come from in terms of the LGBTQ inclusion and empowerment and engagement in the Jewish community? And where are we now? And where do we still need to get to? Now, perhaps, let me narrow it, not just the Jewish community, because for example, the Orthodox community, which I participate in, has a whole different set of challenges and opportunities. But just looking at the reform world, over the last number of decades, where were we you know, some 30, 40 years ago? Where are we now? And, and, and where, where are some opportunities still to go? Well, I'm, I'm glad you asked that. I think this, the, the premises is, and the premise that I've always operated in my uh, more than three decade career in this in this area of the world has really been we don't have a Jew to waste right we don't have a Jew to throw away we don't we, we, we need to 
include everybody's Jewish voice within our Jewish people and our Jewish community. They're rightfully there, and, and that is the premise in which I operate. Uh, to that end, we've worked really hard, and I've been part of the work over the 30 years to make a more inclusive reform Judaism uh, around LGBTQ rights. You know, uh, I was ordained at a time at Hebrew Union College Jewish Institute of Religion when you could not be openly gay. And so we were closeted, but um, still already forming underground networks with people. And um, then once I was ordained, we began to work, we began to work openly towards uh, having people be ordained open, as openly gay or lesbian, not to lie, not to hide their lives. Um, that's taken a, a, a lot of uh, work through the years. And of course, the conservative movement in 2006 uh, did work to welcome openly gay um, rabbinical students and cantorial students. And they are on record as well as welcoming transgender um, candidates as well. And congregations have uh, done some really good work, both reform, conservatives, reconstructors, and, and some modern Orthodox congregation in, in finding a way to embrace and welcome people um, to the communities, uh, whatever their issues are. That being said, there's still a long, long way to go, I think, across the board in the Jewish world. And um, they don't always allow people to rise to their highest level of service in the Jewish world. There's lots of implicit biases, lots of explicit bias. Uh, there's, there's still a lot of shame that I see, particularly from people who come from more traditional aspects of our Jewish community. There's still so much uh, shame, you know, it's a shanda for the Jews to have your kid be gay or transgender. Um, and it shouldn't be a shame. It should be a way to understand that we're all created in the divine image. But Selim Elohim, and now how do we how do we help people become the best they can be through our mitzvot and, and through our system of, of covenant? Amazing. So well said. Friends, be sure to check out Mishkan Gava, where Pride Dwells, edited by our own Rabbi Denise Ager here. Um, and uh, thank you so much for this time and keep up your amazing work. Thanks so much. Great to be with you. Be well and stay strong.